Okay, I have no idea how to start this video. Well, if you are following me on Instagram or TikTok, you will know that recently I had my nikah. This video I'm bringing to you because a lot of you guys had some questions on the planning side of things, how to plan the event and just the logistical side of planning your own wedding. Now, the nikah that we planned and had already was a very small, intimate, low-key event. We do have our main wedding and reception coming up next year. So I just wanted to provide that context because I definitely think it makes a difference planning a wedding for 30 people versus 300. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna split this video into a few sections. So whatever's useful for you, you can hopefully just click along and find the information that you want. Also, if I'm looking down a lot in this video, I'm gonna apologize in advance because I've got everything on my iPad. I just wanna make sure I don't miss anything. So the first section I'm gonna talk about is vendors and the DIY, like, anything that we did on the day or I bought or I made or any of that kind of thing. Then I'm gonna talk about me as a bride getting ready, where I got stuff from, how I sorted all of that out. Just yeah, the details behind organizing yourself as a bride and your outfit and everything that comes with it. Then I'm also gonna talk about keeping organized. So what I did to keep myself on track, a few little tips on how to actually just keep tabs on everything and make sure other people are kept in the loop and all that side of things. So with all that being said, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so the very first thing that we actually booked ahead of everything else was of course the venue. We had a lot of discussions about where we were actually gonna have a Nakar. When we did eventually decide to have a smaller one in advance of the other. If you can hear fireworks in the background of this video, it's bonfire night tomorrow and everyone's apparently starting early. So I'm gonna try and get through this video without that in the background. But if you catch any, I apologize. When we decided that we wanted a smaller event, we had a lot of options in terms of where we could do it. We could hire a venue, we could go to a mosque and do it, we could do it in our home. Like there was a number of options, but we ended up hiring out a venue and it was only a local community center. It wasn't anything extravagant, but we just thought with what we wanted to do and how we wanted to hold the event, that was the best option for us. And the cost was quite minimal as well. I think they charged like 25. I think they charged like 25 pounds an hour to hire it. So once we'd chosen the venue and booked that in, that's when we started looking at decor. I think it's really hard to plan your decor out properly or even book someone until you know what space you're working with. Once we knew that, we then decided to look at some companies that could provide us the decor. Now what we opted for was the stage and partition. It's quite a common thing these days to have as Nikar decor. We also had a separate company that helped set up the food display and tables where people are actually gonna go and eat. Our venue actually provided two rooms as part of our booking. So one room everyone ate in and then the main hall and the room that we used for our actual ceremony was a separate room. So that was also really handy. Everything wasn't just cramped in one space. And the space that we had was plentiful. Like it was it was a really, really nice venue actually. And I think some pointers actually to look out for. If you want to hire a space, a lot of community centers aren't very, that we looked at a lot of options and some of them just aren't very aesthetic, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But the one we chose had actual like windows in the ceiling, had a lot of natural light coming through. That is something that I really wanted. To be honest, because we wanted to decorate so much, we weren't too worried about what the actual community centre looked like. We just wanted a really like clean, spacious place with lots of natural light coming in. So those were the main things I looked for when I was looking for a venue. So in terms of decor, um, the colours that we chose, it was really dependent, to be honest, on what the decor company had. I had one company in mind that I really wanted kind of from the beginning. I just really liked their work. And I would honestly really recommend Instagram to kind of source vendors for decor, for mainly decor, actually, and even photographer, videographer, which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, being able to see people's work is just so much easier to imagine what your event is going to look like and it's so much easier to know if you've liked someone's previous work you can just ask them to recreate it maybe with certain different colors or something slightly different but you know that they've done it before so they can do it for you again i think that's the easiest thing to do rather than asking a random company to kind of create what you've seen elsewhere so i went straight to the source when i liked what i saw i just booked that company 
Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of different companies vary in price for decor and that can be one of the pricier things. It definitely was one of the pricier things. Okay, so in terms of food for the event or catering, I wasn't involved at all in choosing that or yeah that wasn't my job <laughs> basically so i don't really have too much to say on food all i can say is that i think we ended up booking the same caterer as a previous event that we attended and we really liked their food so all i would say is just pay attention when you go to other people's events that are local to you and if you like the food hopefully you are close to the person if you're attending their wedding so you'll be able to ask them what vendor they used and you can use the same one. One of the first things that I decided on was who my photographer videographer was gonna be. To be honest, to this day, I haven't actually seen the professional photos and videos. I'm still waiting on that. So I, I can't give any insight into how the entire experience turned out because I'm still waiting on the footage. But in terms of booking someone in, definitely look at their Instagram page. That's one vendor that you really need to look at their previous work. Know that you're happy with how they've done other people's weddings and shot them and you also want to have some conversations with them in advance you really need to know that you're comfortable with your photographer videographer because they're going to be behind the camera while you're going to have to try and pose or like do all your shots and you know all the coupley photo shoot things that you want to do on your wedding day you want to do it with someone you're comfortable with someone that's good at giving direction someone that you know is going to do a good job and makes you feel comfortable as well especially if you're someone that's not used to being in front of the camera for me it was a bit different i'm always in front of the camera but my husband on the other hand very very different story he's not used to being in front of the camera and he definitely needed direction and they gave that and they made him feel a lot more confident being in front of the camera and i i don't think all photographers videographers are good at doing that. The only reason I know that is because I've done a lot of modeling for bridal campaigns, for makeup artists, I have a lot of experience working with different photographers, different videographers, and just how they manage a shoot. So I was, I think, hyper aware of making sure that I had someone that was gonna make, especially my husband, feel really comfortable. Because a lot of people, when they know they're being filmed, it almost makes them really tense and anxious, even though they don't feel like that at the event or in the moment, but they'll look like that on camera because it's the camera that's making them uncomfortable. So that's why I think having a really good photographer, videographer that makes your guests feel comfortable or your partner or even you feel comfortable if you, you don't already feel comfortable in front of the camera, that's really something to take note of. So when you are booking your photographer, videographer, make sure you ask them loads of questions about how they work, make sure you're seeing their previous work, make sure you get on a phone call with them, Make sure you try and build a bit of a rapport. I was quite lucky in the sense that I already had worked with the people that shot our wedding, so I already knew how they worked, and that's kind of why I chose them. Okay, moving on. Um, the imam, don't forget to book that. <laughs> Again, that was one of the things that I wasn't involved with booking, or that just wasn't my job in this process, so I don't have too much to share on that. The only thing I will say though is please make sure your imam is aware of how you want your event to run. We had a lot of confusion in terms of how we wanted to, the event to run versus how it's traditionally meant to be done and how the imam wanted it to be done. So we had the partition like the decor set up so that we could be in the same room and have the partition between us and actually have the imam kind of conduct the ceremony as we were both sitting there, but that's basically not what happened in the end because they weren't familiar with that concept and they just were very adamant that we should be in completely different rooms. So definitely communicate with your imam in advance and just make sure that they are aware of what you expect just so that they can correct you or just so you're on the same page on the day because that caused a lot of confusion and issues um, on the day. Obviously it was resolved quite quickly, but it's just extra stress and confusion on the actual day that you don't need. So I would make sure that you have those conversations up front and just make sure everyone's on the same page. Everyone knows how the day's meant to run because also our photographers didn't know that the plans changed last minute because the, <laughs> what I told them in advance ended up being different on the day. It just confused them as well on where they had to be because they had to technically be in two room, two different rooms versus what we initially planned. So. Yeah, things like that, just make sure everything is overly communicated at the least up front rather than having any question marks or just anyone being slightly unclear because it just it just creates headache that you don't need on such a huge day. One thing I just wanted to point out, I'm basically going through these things as a list so that you can almost 
tick them off or add them to your list because these are things that I think you should really consider or book in when you're planning for your nikah. The next one is a wedding cake. We had a cake and my mother-in-law actually bought it and got it ordered. Um, I did share a picture of what I wanted it to look like and she basically ordered the exact design. It was such a delicious cake and for the life of me I can't remember where she ordered it from but it was from a local cake maker. <laughs> baker i don't know what you call them other than just showing the design that we wanted i didn't really do too much in terms of ordering the cake but all i would say is it's a bit risky food wise if you haven't tasted their stuff before so maybe just go with someone that you know their work is good everyone really really enjoyed our wedding cake it was really delicious and it looked really pretty too so all i would say is make sure you know what kind of design you want it was a very simple cake that we had it wasn't anything super elaborate but um just make sure you have an idea of what design you want for the cake and then make sure you find a baker that can actually deliver what you want. The main point of mentioning the cake is just to add that to your list and make sure that's something that you have because I think it's a really special part of your day to cut your cake. That is something that we we were actually contemplating not doing at all because we knew we were going to have our main reception and we're definitely having a cake there. So we weren't sure if we would bother with a nigar cake, but yeah, I would have really regretted it because that was a really special moment cutting the cake together. I'd definitely get a cake. Okay, so the next few things I'm going to mention are also part of the list, but they're more so DIY type of things. So they're things that I actually ordered myself versus hiring like a vendor to take care of. So first thing is a wedding sign. Now, I actually made our wedding sign on Canva and then I just got it printed on this massive like Fomex board. And then I bought the stand off Amazon and we added some like a flower garland, which I also got off Amazon. The other thing was favours. So I ordered our favours from an Etsy shop. Um, I just got someone to make some cookies with our initials on them and then our Nikar date. And then we put them in these, what do you call those bags? Organza bags. And then those were put onto each of everyone's plates for when they actually went to go and eat food. They had the little favours on their plates, which was really cute touch. Also ordered our certificate and pen as a set from Etsy as well. I don't think you have to do this. For some reason, I thought I needed to buy a certificate, but your imam provides you with one. I think what was a really nice touch for the certificate for us was our photographers actually filmed us like signing it and it was part of our wedding video. So I think that was a nice touch and um, I think it was nice to have, but I don't think it's necessary. One thing I was tempted to DIY, but I didn't end up doing it was my bouquet. I actually ended up sorting my bouquet out really last minute. I don't recommend you do that. I was very, very stressed. I knew I wanted to have a bouquet on the day, but I knew I also wanted it to be fresh flowers. It was one of those things that kind of slipped my mind because we were doing so much else and I knew I wanted to leave it last minute because I wanted fresh flowers. But by the time last minute came, it was way too last minute and it was literally the night before. But luckily my husband came to the rescue and he sorted my bouquet out. He went to a florist early morning on our wedding day to basically get this bouquet made and brought it back. So I don't really have too much to share other than I just gave a picture of what I wanted and um, I really wanted red and white roses in it and then some greenery and I basically found a picture on Pinterest so that the florist could see the vision and see what I wanted and then they basically gave me a version of that based on the flowers that they had. That's pretty much all I did in terms of my bouquet and I'm so glad I got it. I really, really recommend having a bouquet on your wedding day because it just... I don't know, I felt like it completed my look. I'm really, really happy that I had that. And I felt like it made me feel a bit more confident in photos, being able to hold something. I don't know about you guys, but I still get really awkward in photos of where to put my hands. So I think as a bride, you just feel a lot more relaxed and you look a lot more comfortable when you're holding something. And the bouquet is the perfect thing to have in your hands on your wedding day. Also, something else that my mother-in-law ended up purchasing was our ring plate. What was really funny is I was looking at ring plates for a good few weeks online and I just wanted to see like the right designs and stuff. And then she told me she'd ordered one and it was basically the one I was going to order. And we both saw it on Instagram. So again, that's something that you can find on Instagram. There's a lot of independent like small businesses that customize small little things like that. They also do pen holders and things for if you're also getting the certificate and pen. So... Yeah, I would definitely search on Instagram for some businesses that do those customizations because they do really, really nice ring plates. And um, I think they also are available on Etsy. So you can have a look on there as well. I didn't actually order that, so I don't have too much 
more to say about the ring plate. <laughs> okay, something that we actually did properly DIY was the aisle decor. So we did have an aisle. I'll talk more about the setup in a minute because I actually planned out the whole like floor plan of the room. I went to town on this organization. Where I wanted the guests to sit, I wanted there to be an aisle, obviously for me to enter. So in the venue, we obviously used the chairs that they provided. Now the chairs weren't pretty. They were like fold up chairs. It was very, it's a community center. It was very basic. It wasn't like wedding style. So what we decided to do was wrap the chairs that were in the aisle seats. Um, so I'll show a photo as an example, but basically I bought a bunch of material from a local market. My cousin actually went and figured out how to wrap the chairs. So I found some pictures on Pinterest that I liked the look of. I showed them to her and she basically did her magic and wrapped the chairs on the actual day. Cause obviously I wasn't there when everything was getting set up. So she did that and then also placed the candles that I bought from Amazon in the aisle. So that was what I considered the aisle decor. It was just to make the aisle a bit more pleasant to walk down and just make it a little bit more like tied in to the rest of the decor. I didn't want there to be a really big difference between where the guests were sitting and then where me and my husband were sitting for the actual ceremony. I wanted there to be like cohesion in the decoration. So I thought having the aisle decor was a nice touch to incorporate everything. A little extra DIY thing we did was add rose petals to organza bags and that was going to be the confetti and we put them on all the guest chairs and then we did have a moment once the nikah ceremony was complete we walked back down the aisle together and then all the guests threw the confetti and it was a really cute moment okay we're now on to the second section which is all about me my outfit my makeup what i wore all those things so the first thing i'm going to start with is my makeup quite quickly because this is the actual pretty much the makeup that i wore on my nagar i did my makeup myself i didn't hire a makeup artist and i've actually just filmed my makeup tutorial on how i did my nagar makeup for my page today i filmed that earlier which is why i've got the makeup on my face right now so if you're liking how this is looking and you want to look like this kind of <laughs> on your nagar day or your wedding day in general definitely go and check out the video. I opted to do my own makeup mainly because of budget and funds. I could not afford a makeup artist for the budget we had for this smaller event. I will likely have a makeup artist for my main day next year but it just wasn't in the budget for this year so I had to train myself to become a bridal makeup artist for the day and I think I did pretty well. Like I was really really happy with how it turned out and I was really glad that I chose myself as my chosen makeup artist because obviously again I've had a lot of experience having my makeup done by makeup artists and they are really good at their work but a lot of the time South Asian bridal makeup in particular I'm not that much of a fan of in terms of I didn't want that for my main day I wanted more of a natural looking like me kind of look like me but better I didn't want to be super caked or like just have a lot of makeup on the face even though I definitely have a lot of makeup on the face right now but I don't know I think there's just a bit of a difference between what I wanted and what experience I'd had with makeup artists in the past so I think that also was part of the reason why I decided to do my own makeup. I really do recommend that people just kind of teach themselves to do makeup. Like I'm not a professional makeup artist at all and I managed to do it. So I have faith in you. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is my outfit. I don't think you will actually believe me when I tell you. When it came to my outfit, I went to one single store. I went to one store and basically what happened was we planned the nagar quite last minute if you will it wasn't it wasn't planned last minute but the date was set when we decided on the date it ended up being quite close like we only gave ourselves a couple of months max and um, to actually get everything done by the time we actually chose a date because the date we changed very many times it was a whole fiasco let's not talk about that eventually when we chose the date we pretty much had like two months to plan this whole thing so when I went to shop for outfits, I was told, I I originally assumed because I wanted something very simple, just like a bit of a low-key dress almost, like a simple nakar dress. It wasn't a huge event, so I didn't want a huge gown. I didn't want something super elaborate. So in my head, I thought, I'm going for a simple outfit. It won't take as long to make or arrive. And nah, uh, uh I was so wrong in that. I was so, so wrong. If it's coming from Pakistan or any other country, if it's if the tailors are there, if people are making it over there, it's gonna take time. So when I went to my first store, just to try on some outfits and have a fun time, I was told that it would take minimum six weeks to make. And by that point, obviously my actual wedding day wasn't far off that point. 
So I began to get really stressed and essentially I ended up ordering the, one of the first dresses that I saw in the first store that I went to. So that was an experience and a half that was very, very stressful. I do not recommend zero out of 10. To be honest, the store that I went to was so lovely and they made a lot of effort with me and they actually like altered my dress. Basically, I had a lenga that I chose, but then I also added this red shawl. I'll show you an image of it. The shawl wasn't a part of the initial outfit. So what we ended up doing was we amended the initial like white lenga outfit to kind of incorporate the shawl. We did make a few alterations. They obviously tailored it to my size. So there were quite a few things that were done to my outfit and it did take about six weeks to arrive. It arrived on time. There wasn't any issues with that at all. And they also did make more alterations, as slight ones that needed doing, like my wrist was a bit too tight or something. So they made the alterations for me quite quickly. But yeah, very, very last minute, I didn't get a chance to shop around. What the hell is that noise? Seriously. So I would recommend go as early as possible. Really go as early as possible so you can actually enjoy the experience. I feel like I robbed myself of the experience of shopping for an outfit. Although to be fair, I wasn't really... I wasn't really that hurt that I couldn't go to a million shops and try on a million different outfits. Like, I couldn't really bother to do that anyway. So I was quite glad that it was quite a good like quick decision and I was really happy with my end outfit so I have no regrets I really like that it was kind of traditional style but also it's quite different like I'd not seen anyone recently have an outfit similar to that and that's kind of what I wanted I wanted to do my own thing I wanted a regal look and I feel like I achieved that so um yeah I was really happy so once I did order my outfit and I knew what I was going to be wearing I then went and shopped for jewelry now jewelry was more of a shopping experience actually having said that Jewelry, I also went into one store. So when I actually went to shop for jewelry, I did the exact same thing. Um, not because I was time constrained. I just went into one shop and I actually just fell in love with the jewelry set and the rest was history. I just decided to pick it up. Um, I actually went shopping on Green Street with my cousin in London. And to be honest, a lot of the stores on that street sell, sold very similar things. But the shop that I went to first, I think I just got quite lucky that we stepped into the first shop and they had exactly kind of what I was looking for. I ordered so much jewellery from there and they did give me quite a good discount. There was a lot of negotiation, bartering involved. It was an exhausting experience. What I will say is if you're shopping for jewellery in these kind of places, take someone with you. I think it was a bit of a struggle not knowing the language, being able to communicate with people properly. And I think that would just would have made the experience a lot smoother and probably would have got me an even better discount. Yeah, we did have quite an experience shopping on Green Street, but um, it was quite a quick turnaround as well. So I got the full jewelry set. So I got my necklaces um, in a set. I got my earrings. I had the Sahara, which like were jewelry for my hair almost. Um, I had my ticker. I had uh, my bangles included. So all of that was a set basically all together from that store. So they just basically put everything together for me. And I did mix and match things. Funny enough, that's what the store's called. It's called mix and match. But I mixed and match jewelry pieces and then they just matched the color of the pearls and things. So it all looked like it came from one piece um, or one set. And um, so that's where my jewelry was from. And I'm so happy with my jewelry. And what I really focused on when it came to my jewelry is getting pieces that I could rewear. So I was very conscious of getting neutral colours, like I didn't want anything super bold. I was contemplating getting a lot of red jewellery because I was wearing a really white outfit and then a red shawl and I wanted to tie in the shawl with the jewellery but I just thought, you know what, I want to be able to actually wear this with multiple different outfits and on multiple different occasions so I decided to go for a more neutral jewellery set in the end. Oh, in terms of my hair, so I did my makeup on my own but my friend did my hair, she did such an amazing job. I always had an idea of what I wanted my hair to look like because I had my dubato on my head I wanted to have an updo. That was just my preference. Again, I had Pinterest inspo pics and things and actually one of her own previous pieces of work was my inspo. So I was really happy that she was able to do my hair. I also ordered a separate veil for my nagar. So when I entered the room, I had a separate veil on my head. I ordered it from a, an Instagram store and um, they basically had a bunch of different options and I just selected from there. I think my cousin actually sent me the name of that store initially. And that was just like an extra touch. I think just part of having your own nagar ceremony, I think for a bride, it's quite nice to have the veil. I don't know how necessary it is, but I wanted it, so I got one. And that was like an extra part of my outfit for at least the beginning half of the ceremony. And then the last thing I think uh, I booked in 
or got for my Nagar was my Mendy. So I booked a Mendy artist. I was really lucky actually. So when I initially was inquiring for quotes for Mendy, I was getting very, very high quotes. And then I came across one artist that I really liked her work as well. So I asked her for a quote and she quoted me significantly less. And then I come to find out that she ended up actually charging me for not because I was a bride, but for the work that I asked her to do, because it was a small event, like I've mentioned many, many times, I opted for a really simple Mendy. Like I didn't want an elaborate design all the way down my arms. I didn't want it on my feet. I just wanted a small, I had it on my palm as well, but I just wanted a small design because I wanted to save like the elaborate stuff for next year. So when I inquired and I showed her the inspo pictures, um, again, I just collated loads of inspo pictures of what I wanted my Mendy to look like. And then she quoted me based off that. And then when I came to met her and she did my Mendy, she told me that she actually charged me based on party um, Mendy because that's what I asked for. I didn't really ask for the full bridal shebang. Whereas the other Mendy artists were charged me based on bridal because I told them I was a bride. I mean, take from that what you will, but it just goes to show in the wedding industry, people do take advantage of brides a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I was really grateful for her being so honest about her pricing and actually charging me for what I'd asked for versus just charging me because I was a bride. A lot of people do that, whether that's your makeup, your hair, your men, the artist, like a lot of people, unfortunately, in the industry do surcharge brides so all i would say is when it comes to your mendy definitely gather a few different quotes make sure you're asking a bunch of different people and then go from there okay we're well, on to the next section now so this section is all about keeping organized how exactly did i keep my head screwed on throughout this entire planning process first things first i created a note in my notes app on my phone and i wrote down everything from the guest list to all the decor vendors like everything i wanted to book everything to do with me everything to do with my husband in terms of his outfit oh i didn't mention he actually ordered his outfit directly from pakistan um his family helped arrange that so he didn't actually get it from a store here but obviously that was his outfit i wasn't really involved in that so there's not much else i can tell you about that but his outfit was really nice yeah if you want to order from pakistan to be honest it was quite quick as well his came quite quickly but then his is a guy's outfit so i don't know if that makes a bit more of a difference in terms of the turnaround time. So I made a notes list of everything. I also shared it with my husband just to make sure that we were both on the same page and we both, any links that I saw. So this is very early on when we were starting to plan and we hadn't booked anything. I just made a list and linked all the different potential vendors. Um, I shared like inspo pics of things that I like the look of. I dumped it all into this note. And then I also created a table just to list out all the different things that we needed to either order, buy, DIY, like all the things that we needed, the things that I basically have just listed out in the first section of this video. And then I'd included like an extra section of that table, which kind of showed what the cost was, what the progress was in terms of paying deposits or items arriving, if we'd ordered something, all that kind of thing. And that was a note that was updated regularly throughout the process. So when things were paid 